Hello travelers and welcome to my 1 to 75 leveling guide for the Spellblade. Now today I'm going to take you from level 1 creating a new character in the solo mode so even first timers to the game this guide will work very well for you and if you're coming back to the game and you're playing in just regular softcore you'll easily be able to do this as you'll even have gold and gear to begin with to make it easier. Now the point of this guide is to get you from 1 to 75 in a in an end game build that will allow you to either continue on and finish all the timelines and to finish out all the quests and even push yourself in the arena or to switch to another build that you have found on mine or another content creators page that you've been wanting to try now we're going to try and get you there as quickly as possible everything that i do in this guide will be documented i will stop every few levels at certain threshold points in which i'll show you new skills i'm specking how i'm specking them where i'm putting my passive points the order that i'm putting them in that's why all the timestamps will be at specific levels that's where i'll have paused and then showed you exactly where i'm putting everything and i'll stop at the gambler to show you you know what i'm picking up what gear i'm putting on my character we'll have a basic loot filter that's not going to hide any items but it will highlight items that we're looking for that will be attached in the written guide that you can find on the forums which will be in the description below and again this is just to get you familiar with the game to push you through the campaign as quickly as possible and to get you into end game with a build that can transition to any other build that you want all right let's go ahead and get started Alright, I just hit level 4. We're now into the game a few minutes. As you can see, we're still deathless. We're still playing solo. Level 4, and here you get to specialize your first skill. So by pushing S, your skills will open up, and you'll see that your first specialization slot has opened up. You can go ahead and click on that, and you'll have the option to spec one of your four skills into it. We're going to go ahead and start with Elemental Nova. This build is going to be completely based around getting the Spark Charges, and then we're going to be channeling it, and we're going to get extra damage with Spark Charges through other skills and, and gear and passives later on. But it's definitely going to be one of the fastest, most damaging things, especially since eventually we'll be able to teleport, and it will auto-cast this skill for us, so we won't even have to worry about manually casting it, which is going to make things go really, really fast. So the very first point is going to go right here on the right side in the left lightning nova and the way elemental nova works is it's going to be a skill that you use and it can fire any one of three types of elements every time it's used but now that we've specced into it it'll only do lightning so normally if you don't spec into anything it could be lightning could be fire could be ice but depending on which way you spec into it determines which way it's going to work and now we will be full lightning with it then for passives, by pushing P, you'll see we have two passives at this point. Both of those passives are going to go into Arcanist because we want that intelligence that's going to give us more damage and we want that resistance because resistance early game is like going to make your survival go tenfold through the roof. So we're going to get resistances, we're going to get damage, it's going to work out perfect. Our first eight points are going to go here but we're going to go ahead and slap these two bad boys in there. And then for gear I did have a shield drop in the last few moments and it gave me some physical and some lightning resist. But as you can see, everything else is still empty and we're still looking for some good stuff. This will be based around doing spell damage, so we're not going to be looking for swords and things. We're going to be looking for scepter and wands and staves. Alright, let's get back into it. Alright, I am now level 9. We've gone through a couple of bosses. I played one of them for you. And now that we're here, we get to specialize in our second skill slot. So we're going to first go ahead and take our first skill and we're going to put our points in. Our points, all three of them, are going to go into the spark charges. So that way you'll have a 60% chance to do a spark charge, which is going to be a secondary attack, basically. You'll hit with your first elemental nova. It'll apply a spark charge at a 60% rate. And then that spark charge after 0.7 seconds will hit again, which will be a secondary hit. And it does enough damage that it's going to help you kill things a lot faster. This also boosts the damage of the skill by another 12%. 
And then for the next skill, we're going to specialize into Lightning Blast. Now the reason we're specializing into Lightning Blast is because you can go over here and you can get into Mortal Capacitor, which is going to increase the Spark Charge effect, which basically means it's going to make it hit much harder. Now this isn't supposed to work with Elemental Nova. It's supposed to only affect the Spark Charges that you apply with Lightning Blast itself. However, it does work globally, so we're going to go ahead and spec into it right now. It's been like this for months. I think ever since you know it came out so we might as well just take advantage of it now if it does ever change I will update the guide when that does happen so we're gonna go ahead and put one point in front loaded and we're gonna be working towards that once you put a few points in there you're gonna notice your damage dramatically increases and then for passives we have six more unspent passive points we're gonna put all of them into arcanist so that we have that fire and lightning resist and now we have a total of eight intelligence Remember, you get 4% more damage for every point of intelligence, so that's another 24% more damage right there. And then for gear, we have found quite a few rares and magic items. We're still looking for an amulet. We haven't found anything there. But for our chest, we have some armor and fire resist. For the helm, I have dex, armor, and health. For the offhand, I have... The dodge rating is what I was going for. You don't need the minion damage. For the rings, I have a jade ring with more dodge. This also came with some health regeneration and a chance to find potions. The left ring, we have some increased health regeneration here as well. And then the belt, we have lightning resist. The gloves, we have some flat health regen along with more health. We also have some increased critical strike chance. For the boots, more health regen and armor, which is more defensive. For our relic, we found some cast speed, some intelligence, and some flat health, so three good stats for us. And then for the weapon, we're using a silver wand that has adaptive spell damage, and it takes away three of the cost of mana on all of our spells, which will be both the Lightning Blast, the Flame Lord, and the Elemental Nova that we're using. Now that's another thing that I changed. We picked up a skill called Flame Lord, which I put on my toolbar, and I keep that on autocast. If you don't know how to autocast, I have a video on that. You can search for it, or I'll put it in the link below but with it it's going to give you ward every 15 seconds when it comes off cooldown you'll gain 400 ward which is really going to help with your survivability you'll also take less damage while it's active which will be for three seconds all right let's go ahead and get into some more gameplay All right, I am now level 12. We finished off some more bosses. We're just about to leave the council chambers for the second time and head to the east. Now with that, we have some new items. So some items that we have on this particular one is some new idols. Thanks to our questing, you drop two of them. We're gonna go ahead and put on some fire resist. It gives you a one by two up and a two by one across. You can choose one or the other. In this case, I'm choosing the one by two. You'll have two options. Yours will than mine and then for gearing I'm just gonna hover over all of them really quick as we talk because I don't remember what I've changed although most of the gear is the same I'm pretty sure I have a new chest and I believe I changed out the amulet and we got a little bit of the elemental damage we're still using a one-handed wand now at some point here I'm gonna find a good enough two-handed staff we do have one down here but for the adaptive spell damage it wasn't enough for me to want to switch but as soon as we find one with lightning damage or spell damage on it and adaptive spell damage we'll switch that out and then for the skills so we have one more point to spend in element nova that one point i'm going to go ahead and put into the spark charges we're going to put the first five here then we'll do three in elemental expanse and then we'll get into the channeling and then for the lightning blast we're going to go ahead and keep working on that way with one point more into the front loaded one point into cloud answer 
and one point into Mortal Capacitor, this 40% effect for Spark Charge will make your Spark Charges do 40% more damage. When you get all five points in there and you get to 200% effect, you'll basically be doing triple damage with the Spark Charges, which is really going to increase your damage output, and you're going to notice it very tremendously when you put those points in, especially if you do it all at once, your damage is just going to go through the roof. For passives, I have four more points. We're going to put all four points into Scholar. If it were me personally, I would put them into Elementals for the damage, but because this is a beginner's guide, you're definitely going to want the health, and having the extra mana always helps. So four points right there into Scholar, which is going to give you that 40 health bonus, which is going to increase your survivability at this point. All right, let's go ahead and get into some more gameplay. Alright, we're now level 19 after going through some more bosses and some more gameplay. We're getting towards the end of time, and as you can see for our stats, level 19, still deathless. And for our skills, we have three more points. We also picked up a plus one elemental Nova Helm, so that was really nice. For our points, we're going to go ahead and throw these three points in. We're going to finish off the spark charges, and then we're going to put two of them into the elemental expanse. This is going to make it a much larger area of effect for elemental nova, so you'll be able to hit things much easier. And with just two more points, we're going to be into that channeled, which is really going to help with the spark charges, because you'll go from doing it once or twice a second to you're going to have five attacks per second, which is very rapid attacking, lots of spark charges, and going to do a lot more damage so you can take those bosses out much quicker. For the lightning blast, we're going to go ahead and throw three more points into the mortal capacitor. And then for our third skill that we're going to spec into, now some people would say go flame ward, but you don't really need it at this point. So what we're going to do to speed things up is we're going to go into teleport. And teleport was a skill that we got at level, I believe it was 12 or 13. And it's something we threw on our skill bar because it's a movement skill and it's going to help you, you know, move faster through the campaign. And the first thing that we're going to work towards getting with it is we want to get down here where it's going to cast Elemental Nova for us. And it's going to cast it where we take off, where we land and at the halfway point so that way you'll get three elemental nova casts just for teleporting which is going to make things go a lot faster so for beginners you don't really need to spec into decoys or anything else we're going to go ahead and put one point into the fire and lightning resist and stun avoidance because that's always nice for us and then two points into the elemental damage that we'll get for four seconds after teleporting. And we're almost there. Just a few more points. Probably at the next update we're going to be specking into this. And things from there will just go even faster. For passives, we have seven more points in passives. We're going to throw three of them into Scholar. So that we have three more in there. So we have a total of seven. And the next four, our last four, are all going to go into Knowledge of Destruction. This is going to make it much more likely for Elemental Nova and the Spark Charges to do a critical strike. And when they do do a critical strike, they're going to hit harder. And we have 12% critical strike multiplier, which means that your critical strikes will do more damage. For gear, now we did find a second idol. It has increased health and elemental resist. We got that from an idol shrine that dropped. And then for our gear, the only thing I changed at this point is the helm like i said we found a plus one to elemental nova and it increases elemental nova's damage it also came with some nice resistance all right let's go ahead and get back into some more gameplay All right, we are now in the temple, just about to take on the final boss before we get to the end of time. And with it, we are now level 24. We are still deathless. For our gear, our gear has changed a little bit. I am now wearing a two-handed staff because it has much more adaptive spell damage than a one-hander. It also had some good rolls. It came with spell damage and elemental damage. 
And then I also changed my rings. I now have two silver rings. One has block chance and health, and the other has some lightning damage and some poison resist on it. For our skills, I have two more points for Elemental Nova. One will go into Elemental Expanse, and one will go into Luminaire. So we can now channel it. Then for Lightning Blast, we have two more points. We're going to put the final point into the Spark Charge Effect Mortal Capacitor. And then because sometimes we do use Lightning Blast ourselves, we're going to go ahead and do the Spark Charge Chance on Hit in case we decide to use it. And then for Teleport, Teleport now has enough points that we can start working our way into the Elemental Novas. So two points into Elemental Affinity, one point into Elemental Dawn, and one point into Elemental Dusk. So just to show you a quick example of what will happen when I teleport, boom, it's going to go on both where you land and where you take off. So when I teleport now, that's two casts of Elemental Nova, and the Elemental Novas are free when they're cast that way. Teleport, however, has its own mana cost. But now you're going to be able to do damage as you just keep moving through the game. And then for passives, I have seven unspent points. We're going to go ahead and finish off Scholar with one point. And then the final six, we'll go ahead and finish off Knowledge of Destruction. Alright, let's go ahead and take on this boss and then head to the end of time. So we got really lucky right here, and we actually had Enzanglius drop. However, we won't be using this in this build since it is an incredibly rare drop. Alright, just a quick update, we are level 25, but we now get to make our choice of class mastery, so since we're deathless and we beat Orbitros and we're coming in, we get to click on it, we get to choose, this is a permanent choice, so make sure you choose the right one, and of course we're going Spellblade for this guide, so we're going to go ahead and choose that. For skills, I did get one more point for teleport, which I put in right before the boss for the uh, third elemental nova, this was just going to make the boss be able to go a little bit faster and it definitely helped you saw how fast that fight went down and then for passives i have one point and we're going to go ahead and throw it into the spell blade and we're going to get ourselves some more elemental resist and elemental damage and we're going to go ahead and continue on with the gameplay our next update will be as we get our next specialization slot at level 34. Alright, we've completed a couple more chapters, defeated a few more bosses, and gained quite a few levels. We are now level 34, we are still deathless, and for our inventory, we are still using all of the same items. We haven't changed a single item. We have found a few things. We might switch over some idols if we can find some with some lightning damage on them just to increase our damage, although we're doing really good damage output. But this is the part of the game where you want to start working towards getting your resistances a little bit higher. Now right now we don't have very much. We have zero physical, which is going to be one that we want. Necrotic would be nice. Void is always nice, but we're going to cap out elementals because we're going to get into a lot of fire and lightning later. So that's something we definitely want to keep an eye on now. Now for skills, we got three more points for our skills. For elemental nova, we're going to put two into the area to really cap that out. And then we're going to put one into the channel cost so that we can channel it for a longer period of time it will cost less. We're going to work towards maxing this out and we're going to work towards maxing out the crit chance so that you'll do a lot more damage with the hits as well as the spark charges. And then for lightning blast we have three points. We're going to put one point in cloud answer just to cap that out. And then we're going to start working towards chain lightning. Not that it really matters because we don't actually cast lightning blast anymore. We're just using it for the spark charge effect. But if we do get into surge later in the game and it's auto proccing lightning blast for us, it's nice to have it spec to where it's going to chain and do lots of good single target damage. So our final two points are going to go into storm razor. Then for teleport, we have three points. We're going to start working towards decoys. We already got the damage and DPS down. We're casting Elemental Nova 
three times when we teleport. We're going to get into decoys because now is going to be when we start building into having survivability and by getting our decoys out so that you know we're not targeted 100% of the time it's going to help our survivability so we have three points we're going to put all three into resonant plasma this will give us more resistances after we have teleported as well as stun avoidance but it's going to open up those decoy positions so that we can start getting into that now at level 34 you open up your fourth specialization slot and here you have quite a few choices now if you're having survivability issues for whatever reason I would say go into flame although you should be doing just fine I'm playing this in solo mode so there's you know I have no extra gear no nothing and I haven't even died so you might have died a couple of times you know learning the new mechanics but I doubt that you're struggling that hard if you are though and you want more survivability than anything else I recommend flame ward and, and getting into that and you'll be able to get some more points with it and dig into more ward and damage reduction and have its duration increased however we're gonna go into mana strike because right now when we run out of mana mana strike is the melee skill that we're using that's giving us more mana back so normally when you use this as long as you hit an enemy you get 15 mana back we're going to go ahead and speed that up and we're going to turn it with three points into arcanist blade so now we'll get 24 mana back with a hit which means with just three hits our mana is going to be pretty close to full and then we're going to work towards spark charges because since we're doing great damage with spark charges we might as well do spark charges with our offensive mana spender elemental nova and we're going to do spark charges with our mana generator mana strike so we're going to work down there we got one point into mana spark and then we're going to put one point into spark charges and our next three points will go here so that we have that guaranteed spark charge chance with our attack of mana strike and then for passives we have 12 unspent points. I'm going to jump into Sorcerer just real quick, and we're going to put 5 points in here. And those 5 points are going to go into the mana and armor. This is just for defense and to give us a little bit more mana so we have more to play around it. It's going to let us spam Elemental Nova for a little bit longer so that those rares and bosses that have more life we can take out in one simple go and not have to recharge mana in the middle of a boss fight because that's where you'll get killed. So we're going to put 5 points there just to get some more armor but mostly for that mana and then in spellblade we're gonna go ahead and put five more points into elemental affinity to really get those resistances and then our final two points we're gonna put into arcane warden so that when we do attack with mana strike since you'll be in melee range you're now gonna get 10 ward gained every time that you hit at least one enemy with it all right let's go ahead and jump into some more boss fights All right, now we've reached Heoboria. We've done some more boss fights, made it through a couple of chapters, and we have died once. So we've realized it's time to gear up. So let's go ahead and go over the skills, the passives, and then we're going to travel to the end of time to do our first gambling. As you can see, we are on res and the main thing killing us right now is the fact that we have 0% physical. So we're going to try and cap out our elementals and our physical and then we should be able to get through the rest of the campaign absolutely no problem. So for skills, we have some more skill points to put out. For elemental nova, we're going to put one more point into the star prism for that channel cost. For lightning blast, we're going to put one point in chain lightning to get the chain started. For our teleport we're going to get our decoy so we're going to go ahead and put one point in decoy position and one point in unexpected copy so we'll now have two decoys every time we teleport this will help take the pressure off of everything coming after us and then for mana strike seven points we're going to go ahead and finish out the spark charges with three points there so we're guaranteed a spark charge whenever we hit something with mana strike and with our final four points, we're going to put one into attack speed, one into spirit blade for the area, and two points into manding gain so that we get 40% more mana. So right now we're getting our 15 base plus nine here for 24 total. And now that we get 40% more, 24 
plus 40% is, uh, I don't know, 30-something. So you get a lot of mana back, that's all that matters. And then for our items, like I said, we're going to go gamble, but for the most part, we're going to try and get rid of all of our magic items and get some rares with good affixes that we want. And then the other thing that we want is we are now level 40, which means that we've opened up the ability to use the composite staff. This one actually dropped a couple of levels ago, but it dropped before I was even allowed to wear it. But it has more adaptive spell damage, and it has chance to shock on hit. So we're going to go ahead and throw this bad boy on. We're going to craft it when we get to the end of time. So let's go ahead and jump over there. Alright, before we get into gambling and trying to get our last gear slots, we still have our passives to put in, I almost forgot. 11 passive points, we're going to go ahead and cap out the Arcane Warden with 6 more points. And then with our final 5, we're going to go into Fire Aura. Now Fire Aura is going to automatically, without us doing anything, have the ability to be cast. You're going to have a chance... 25% chance every second. This is doubled if you don't have Fire Aura active, which we don't. So 50% chance every second to have Fire Aura. And as you can see, us just moving around, we now have Fire Aura. This is going to help with things that kind of jump on your heels and you don't, like, as you run, it's going to do some damage to them. Probably won't kill them, but as we get into the lightning and make it lightning damage based, there's a good chance it might actually start to kill them. And it's going to be very helpful, especially in this end of the campaign, early Monolith of Fate running. All right, now getting into the gambling, what we really want to work on is getting that elemental resistance. So we're going to be looking for elemental resistance and physical. We don't have a whole lot of gold and everything is more expensive now in the gambler. But what we're going to try and replace here is we're going to get a gold ring. We're going to get a gold amulet and then we're going to try and replace our belt. And if we go to accessories, you can see here we have a gold ring here. We're going to go ahead and buy that. Cost us 5,000 gold. Don't get a whole lot of tries here, but that's got 16% elemental, so we're going to go ahead and throw that on. And we don't have any gold amulets, and there's a belt that we like. We have a leather belt, which, you know, we're already wearing it. But we can go ahead and try and get some physical with it. These are pretty spendy at $1,200 apiece. Our first one has cold and necrotic resistance. Our second one has elemental, which isn't bad. We'll buy this last one here. And we got dodge rating, some endurance. So we're going to go ahead and throw the elemental resist on. And then if we go back, we're going to try and get a gold amulet here. But I don't know if they're going to drop for us. Nope, still don't have one. One more refresh here. We got another chance for some gold rings. So let's do those. And if you're struggling with a weapon, feel free to go ahead and try and gamble a weapon on. Here we got... Strength and lightning resist, more elemental. This one came with the bare minimum elemental with some dodge. We're not going to wear those. Let's go ahead and just get a regular amulet since we're going to need one. We'll go with the health for now. It's probably our best bet just for that survivability. 20, you know, 5 to 25 health is a lot in the beginning. Uh, we don't want that one. And we're at the bare minimum of our gold. Spell damage, damage over time. We're just going to keep what we have. We didn't get any physical resistance. Um, so we're still going to be struggling. We did get our elemental up quite a bit. We're going to be running into a lot of fire and a lot of cold now. So at least we got our cold up. Physical is still going to be a problem. So arrows and things that physically hit you. Wolves that are chasing us, which are coming. Those are going to be a bit of a problem. But just keep moving and get through it. If you find anything on the ground with physical, that's going to be what you want to go for. All right, let's get back into it. All right, we've just reached Lyoth. We are now level 47. We're about to do the final two bosses. We're going to do Lyoth, and then we're going to do Lagan, and that will be the end of the campaign. Once those two boss fights, I'm going to play them out in normal speed for you right after we're done with this update. Then I'll check in with you at level 49 for our fifth specialization slot. But right after these bosses, we're just going to jump into timeline 55, fall of the outcast in the monolith of fate, and we're just going to start working our way through the timelines and that's where we're going to be really gearing and focusing on our rewards and collecting our affixes and doing our crafting is all in there once the campaign is done now you'll see my stats i did find a little bit of physical but only 10 percent and then for our skills 
We're going to have two more points in all of our skills. We have two more for Elemental Nova. We're going to put one point to finish off the Star Prism and one point to charge destruction. For Lightning Blast, we have two points. We're going to put one point in Lightning and one point in Arcing Power. Then for Teleport, we have two more points. I'm going to put both of them into Ward Gained when we teleport. And then three points in Mana Strike. We're going to put two points into that Mana Gain and then one point into Attack Speed. And at level 49, I'll get back in with you just to show you which will be the fifth skill that I'll specialize into. For Passives, we have seven more points. I'm going to put one into Incinerating Aura, five points into Crackling Aura, and then one point into Stormblade so that when we do use Mana Strike, we're going to have a little extra damage with it, and it'll have an additional chance to apply a second spark charge on top of the one that it already does. Alright, let's go ahead and check out these boss fights.
Alright, we have beat Lyoth, we have beaten Lagon, and we are now in the Monolith of Fate. We have done two Echoes, and we have hit level 49. The EXP is really fast at this point, and it probably won't slow down until we get to about level 60. Now right now we are still struggling on resistances, but we are finding a lot more gear and a lot better stuff is dropping for us. So for skills, we haven't leveled anything up yet, but we did unlock, since we're at level 49, our fifth specialization slot. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and throw in Flame Ward. And then what's going to happen is as our passives go up, when we finally unlock Surge, I'm actually going to switch the movement skill Surge with teleport and then we're going to respec a little bit but at that point I'll go over it so that's about five levels away so I'll do another one of these at about level 55 but right now we're going to spec into flame ward and basically we want to increase the duration of it and we want to get more wards so that our survivability goes way up so we're going to go ahead and put our first three points into dilation and then we're going to go ahead and throw a point into Star Wars Defense, and then two points into Barrier so that we take less damage while it's active. And then for passives, we have three more passive points. So I'm going to go ahead and stick all three of those in Mana Reaver. This is going to give us more HP, and it's going to give us a chance to gain mana whenever we do a melee attack. So whenever we use Mana Strike, there's a chance to get an extra 10 mana back. But the health is also really vital because the more life you have, obviously the higher your survivability. And then for items, we have found a couple of nice idols. We have a plus two spell lightning damage, we have some shock effect, and then we have the first two that we started with, with some elemental resist, increased health, and some fire resistance. Our weapon is currently a gated staff with 34 adaptive spell damage. We have lightning damage and chance to shock on hit on it. I'm just going to hover over everything. We're still wearing that same helm that had plus one elemental nova. Not a bad chest, not a very good belt. We still have a few magic items, including this ring, which came with a lot of health. The brass amulet for that elemental damage and lightning resist. We definitely want a new amulet. We want a new relic as well when we can find one. We have a nice pair of Heoborian boots that came with some move speed, a lot of health regen per second, and a lot of dodge. And then we have the refugee gloves with some mana regen dodge, and we get some leech off of our hits. And we picked up a level 52 or acceptor, which has more adaptive spell damage than our two-hander. Uh, once we hit level 52, we're going to go ahead and throw this on, and that will allow us to have an offhand where we can go into a shield or a catalyst, get some more ward per second, and get some more defenses that way, and still do more damage than we are with this two-hander. So, I'm going to go ahead and get into it. I'll show a couple of echo runs, and then we'll be at the next stage.
All right, I am now level 55. We're still working on our resistances. We have gotten a bit more armor. We have a bit more dodge. We have a bit more ward retention, and we definitely have more life, but our, our resistances still need a little bit of work. We are now at a 13 streak in the fall of the outcast. By the next update, I'm sure we'll have moved on from this timeline. I'm going to be doing Rayhod next, so we'll be going up to that timeline. For passives, I put my points, I, I tapped out the Stormblade and capped out the Mana Reaver. The next five points will all go into Burden of Knowledge as we work our way up to Surge. We just need five more points. And then for skills, we got one more point for Elemental Nova. We're going to put it into the base crit chance. Then we have Lightning Blast. We're going to put one more point into Arcing Power. For Teleport, one more point into the Ward Gain. For Mana Strike, one more to the Attack Speed. And for Flame Ward, we have 10 points. We also picked up a Relic that had plus 1 to Flame Ward, so we got an extra level for that. We're going to go ahead and cap out the Ward that we get. And then we're going to do some Ward per second as well. And two more in the damage reduction. Alright, and I'll give you probably the boss fight for Abomination, and then we'll move on to the next timeline. And I'll do my next update at level 60 when... Alright, we are now level 60, and as you can see, we've gained some resistance of all types. We're still working on them. We have beaten the Abomination timeline, so the level 55 timeline is done. We've moved on to the Black Sun. We're now doing the level 65 timeline. When Abomination dropped, it did give us the Woven Flesh Chest, which I'll go over in a second. But for right now, the timeline that we're on, we're working towards 75% Void Resistance because the boss will be completely Void. So that's the only thing that's going to really matter on this timeline is getting from 6% up to 75%. For Skills. We have a few more points. We're also going to swap over and switch our passives so that we can now spec into Surge. So we have the one point Elemental Nova. We're going to put it in Charge Destruction. For Lightning Blast, we're going to put it into Arcing Power. For Mana Strike, we're going to go ahead and do the Attack Speed. For Flame Ward, we have two more points. One will go in Barrier, and another is going to go into more Ward per second. After that, we have three more points. We're going to do a little bit of damage to get some Lightning damage out of it as well. Even though we have great damage right now, a little bit more never hurts. And then for Teleport, we're going to respect that. We're going to despecialize it. We're going to go to Passives real quick. We're going to put our five points in. Our five points at this point are all going into Burden of Knowledge, which is going to give us 20 Adaptive Spells damage which is really going to boost our damage our weapon only has 45 ish on it right now so this is like a 33 percent increase in damage so we're going to put those five points in we unlocked surge we're going to now spec into surge and for surge the plan with surge is we want it to auto proc lightning blast for us and we also want to get into the spark charges now when you get into these spark charges the nice thing about surge is you can get a hundred percent chance for a spark charge and you can get a hundred percent more spark charge effect per sword you have on now we're not wearing a sword now eventually we'll switch over to a sword and get some adaptive spell damage where we'll be wearing one and this spark charge will stack with the spark charge that we're getting from the lightning blast which is going to make it even do a lot more damage however this spark charge effect will not affect the spark charges with elemental nova that is not bugged and this is only supposed to affect the ones that are applied by surge itself so it's just the lightning blast one that's kind of global but that one will stack with this one for now and it gives you that nice boost of damage also as you'll be able to get these lightning blasts you'll get to cast lightning blast up to four times while you search so every 
I believe the cooldown is four seconds. Yes, every four seconds you get four lightning blast. It will cost some mana. That's why we've been specking lightning blast not so much into the heavy mana costing chain and more in the above because this will ca count as a U cast and therefore in lightning blast when it is that you have maximum additional chains based on how many times that you have recently cast it and this doesn't cost mana. Every time that Surge procs Lightning Blast, that does count as a U cast, and that's why you get the extra damage with it. If we went on the bottom, you'd get the chains no matter what, but that mana cost starts to get really expensive. Alright, so I'm going to start with doing the Lightning Blast part of Surge. So we're going to go ahead and put those three points in, and then we're going to work towards the Spark Charge. And as you can see, we've already got the tree pretty well set up with just the eight points. And then for gear, we did find two nice idols. So we have two idols that have lightning damage on them. Now we are working towards 300 mana. And when we get to that 300 mana, our damage from these idols is going to double, which is going to be really awesome. We picked up the Woven Flesh, which is 100% drop from the Abomination when you beat them. This gives you more health, and it also gives you 100% critical strike avoidance, which is huge for your survivability, as crafting 100% critical strike avoidance at this point in the game is a lot more difficult to do. So this chest piece will last a while until we craft a bunch of better things. We did some crafting on our scepter. As you can see, we're still wearing the Yorick scepter, but we put some elemental lightning damage on it so we boosted that up quite a bit everything else is pretty much the same we did have a drop for a plus one to surge so we are now going to trade that out and lose one point to flame word but surge is now going to get a free bonus point which we'll put in real quick and that's going to be it for right now i'll get back to you in another five levels with an update probably going to be right about before we take the boss on in this timeline all right let's get to it Alright, we've beaten Rhea the Void boss, we've moved on to the Lagon timeline, we are now level 65, and as you can see, we've definitely worked on our resistances, we got really close to capping out our Void, our Necrotic is high, our Physical is the lowest, Elemental needs just a little bit more work, and with our new shield, we capped out Poison with just one affix. So, for our gear, we have, we picked up a third idle so that we have three of them now that give us lightning damage and we're looking for one more as soon as we get a fourth one we'll have the maximum amount of them that you can obviously get and then once we hit 300 mana the damage is going to double with those which will be huge that's going to be a big boost once we can get there and then we're still wearing the woven flesh we changed out our helm we had a nice drop with a t5 mana t5 spell crit we added health to it in both suffix slots and then we hit level 64 so we picked up a carapace shield which gives you 75 percent poison resist which is huge right off the bat and then on it we have necrotic resist and health and there's no other fixes right now that i have that i'd want to put on it so we're just leaving it for now we'll crack that later we redid our amulet it's got some mana elemental health and void for our gold ring, we have some void resistance. We threw this on so that we could take on Rhea. You don't need the critical strike avoidance. In fact, you don't need any of it except the void resistance. So this is one of those things that only has one affix that we want. So we'll definitely be trading it out here soon. For our belt, it has the physical resist, health, lightning damage that we want. For the gloves, we have a nice plus 8 intelligence. We have some critical strike. We have dodge, a little extra block chance. Don't really need the block chance, but it's a nice pair of gloves for us right now. Heoborian boots still. We've had these on for quite a while. And then our third eye gives us plus 1 to surge. We put this on quite a while ago. And it's got some mana regen and elemental resistance. For passives, 
We got five more points as we gained five more levels. We're really trying to get to that 300 mana. So we're going to go ahead and throw three more points into the Sorcerer Tree, into Mana Shell, and then our final two into Wisdom, just to get that extra mana as we're starting to get really close to that point where we're going to hit that 300 point. And then for skills, we changed some skills around. So we got rid of Elemental Nova. Now that we're Spellblade, obviously we're more of a hybrid. We're not straight, you know, spell damage. So Elemental Nova was starting to lack the damage. We switched it out and we did Enchant Weapon. Now with Enchant Weapon, the nice thing about Enchant Weapon is it's just more lightning strikes for you. So every time that you proc it, it has a 15 second cooldown. But for 5 seconds plus however many points you have in concentration, which we have 3, which means we have a total of 8, you can get up to 9 seconds, which means 9 out of 15 seconds, or roughly 60% uptime, you're going to have this zap on Conduit, where it zaps nearby enemies, and you can make it do it just under every second, which is a lot of extra lighting, it really boosts your damage, especially if you have shock on hit, because all those shock is going to reduce the enemy's lightning resistance, and then your lightning blast and all your spark charges are going to do even more damage this we have three points in concentration one point in efficacy one point in celerity three points in fulminate one point in conduit and three points in thundering we're working towards tapping out thundering tapping out concentration and capping efficiency so that we don't have that mana cost and then we also got rid of flame word we're just using the base flame word and we switched out for static and static is going to cast a lightning blast every second for us as we move around so this is going to increase your damage a lot too because every time that you cast lightning blast through this the next time you surge it's going to have all those lightning blasts do procs and they're going to do more chains due to the fact that lightning blast has been cast more times in the last four seconds so we have three points in high voltage four points in reverberation three points in fulminating blows one point in overload five points in diode and one point in unlimited power we're working towards maxing out reverberation, maxing out high voltage, and then we'll just go with some extra charges. And that's it. That's the update for now. My next update will be at 75 to pretty much have the end of this build and how it comes together. It's not going to be the most damaging thing in the world. It's great for clearing monos. It's great for taking out trash mobs. Even rares, fire golems go pretty quick. However, the bosses, they are going to be a little bit longer of a fight. But again, it's your first character. We don't have the best gear. The damage can definitely be higher. You know, once we break that 300 mana barrier, it'll definitely get a bit higher. But for now... It's going to get you all the way to level 75, and you could continue this build well past that, or you could start switching to something you found on another channel. Alright, let's go ahead and continue for a bit.
Alright, we beat Lagon the second time, we did all the quests, we finished out that timeline, and we moved on to the Emperor timeline, where you get a lot more EXP, it's a level 100 timeline, things will speed up at this point, the build's really coming together, we crafted some more gear, so this is where I'm going to leave you guys, so on a final note, we're level 75, haven't quite capped down all my resistances, we have a little bit more armor than we had before, a little bit more dodge than we had last time, we're up to almost 1500 health, we were stacking a lot of health, it's really helped, especially since we're leeching and not doing life build and then for the skills so we got some 19 some 20 skills surge has an extra level that's why it's ahead but for static this is the final point the level 20 the, the, the final final point that you get I would put into overcharge but this is how the skill tree is otherwise for lightning blast one thing that's really going to improve your single target damage is one point in convergence I would almost recommend putting that point in before you put the fourth point in like we did in arcing power once I put that in and the lightning blast can chain to the same enemy we were doing like four to five times as much damage and bosses and everything started going a lot faster now if you watch the gameplay of Lagan, it did look kind of slow but that's only because a lot of things wouldn't target it so enchant weapon won't target it static won't target it and because those things weren't casting lightning blast like they should when we would surge and have lightning blast proc it wasn't getting as many chains as it should have so it did about half as much damage as it should have been doing otherwise it would have been a much faster kill but we go through rares golems fire golems siege golems we go through all of them super super quick just one surge and they're dead and then for surge itself this is how we have it set up we went with a little distance with our last point for mana strike the last point we went with mana storm important to remember this cost mana now you'll get more mana than this back so as long as you are constantly using it you're going to be positive mana your mana will be going up however if you do have mana issues with this i'd recommend unspecking but the extra lightning is really cool and it's just another hit and one more lightning thing that you're you know you're, you're specting to lightning damage so why not so it's just a little bit more damage that you can get out of it some extra hits which will apply shock if you have them and then for enchant weapon, we put one point, our last point, into thundering so that we have some added melee damage. Surge will do a little bit more damage, and that's always nice. And then for passives, we put some more points. I got up to eight points in wisdom for that mana. We ended up breaking the 300 mana barrier. I ended up crafting some mana on some gear along with a lot of health. And then in the spell blade, we put four points in awe strikes, but this is what the skill tree finalized Alan as. And then for items... So we're still wearing the Carapace Shield, it's still a magic item. We still have on the Woven Flesh, the Leech, and the Extra Health, and the Critical Strike Avoidance is really, really nice. Probably going to wear this even for a lot longer until I craft up you know, a bunch of nice items that have some Tier 5 Critical Strike Avoidance on them, along with other stats that I want. Did change the weapon, we are now running a Scepter. I had a Scepter drop that had... 55 adaptive spell damage which was nine more than our previous wand that we were using it also came with a lot of spell damage and added spell lightning damage with leech we put shock and chill on it and then for every other item i'm just going to hover over them really fast i'll put the gear planner in the link the gear planner is going to have these final things so it might be confusing to people in the very beginning but this is the gear planner will be my level 75 gear and then for the idols we found two health idols with percentage increase. We never did end up finding a fourth lightning damage that's doubled over 300 mana. So there is potential to get a little bit more damage out of this. But that's it guys. At this point, this build will take you all the way through the endgame. We're running level 100 timelines right now, so level 100 mobs are not a problem. Bosses take a little bit longer, but at this point, you can spec into any other Spellblade you know, video that you've seen through any of the content creators and play one that you know looks interesting. You can farm gear with this so that you can you know, be ready to go with those builds, or you can continue to gear for this and push this build even further. It's nowhere near min-maxed on this particular setup. Alright guys, that's it for me. Thanks for joining. If you haven't subbed, make sure to do that. Like the video if you enjoyed it, and just keep wait because we have more leveling guides coming. The plan is to do all of the masteries before the launch of the game. They are very time consuming, and I am sorry that they take so long to get out, and hopefully there's no big changes in the future that make me have to redo them. But for now, hope you enjoyed it, and have a good day.